Well, we're going to move on now to Fred, who is down in Charleston. Hello, Fred. Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, Hi. Eric, aren't, Eric, aren't you the uh, local roach expert? Well, I don't know. Uh, Pat's got a, also, uh, I did my dissertation work on cockroaches, but so did Pat's on goalie. So let it let it go and we'll see if we can answer it. Oh. Okay, anyway, uh, I was wondering, if do roaches communicate with, with each other like ants do, whether there's food ahead? And the reason I a ask this is um, I've used a lot of your techniques to get rid of I think we had a resident roach colony in our house, and I've used a lot of your techniques to get rid of them and, and some other ones that I did myself. But uh, in the last couple of years, I haven't had, I don't think I've had more than 10 roaches in the house that I've spotted. Good for you. I'm just wondering, did they put something down out there to say, don't bother going in here? Or, uh, you know, like ants, usually like the last ant out will right. tell the other ants, don't bother going up there. It's there's all nothing gone. left to eat. With. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they drag their abdomen on the, the surface and put down a little chemical pheromone, we call it. Right. To say this is a good place, come on, come on here. Cockroaches don't do that. They're they're not social. Uh, there's some that are pre-social. They're not social like ants. Um, so they're not they're Aren't not sharing glad? food or com yeah or communicating <laughs> yes. directly. However, cockroaches will hang out in the same area, and they, um, you know, in their feces. Uh, I think I talked about this on another show. They have a. Uh, aggregation pheromone we like to call them focal fecal points <laughs> so you can use that at your next cocktail party and it basically says you know if one cockroach is here and poop and it's not a bad place to hang out and so others will hang out and poop and create a focal fecal point and that's when you're doing actually cockroach control you actually look for their spotting starts with our show right we were talking about the yeah. snake poop before <laughs> um so but they don't they don't share food or antenate each other saying hey you got to go check out this ritz cracker i found underneath the uh the refrigerator but uh, again they will hang out in the, the same area yeah especially uh especially german cockroaches you find them aggregating a lot and that tends to be the primary indoor pest if you have larger species they're uh they're primarily outdoors but something is they're has just attracted them. Yeah, just passing passing through. <laughs> so we often do put baits, like ants, if you put out a bait and you get one to go to the bait, then with most species, not all, they'll, they'll recruit back to that bait. With cockroaches, you try to place the bait where you think a lot are hanging out. And actually, and I was I was kind of being silly, but you do look for those <laughs> focal fecal focal point, fecal points it? and uh, the places that cockroaches like to have. Because pretty much, and this is a good take-home lesson for a lot of pests, you can do a lot of pest control with, with baits, which tend to be rather safe and contained. Um, but you got to get the, the bug to them, and they don't sense it or smell it from long distances generally. They've got to stumble into it at some point in time so your placement is critical you gotta find good placement. their hangout or some place that they're going to pass through and the companies are pretty good about putting information on the box if you mm -hmm. take time to read it about where good places are to to put a bait but in general for all our listeners if you ever use a bait lots of times you want it to touch things a lot of insects like to touch things there's thigma so tactic. the edge of the wall yeah. or the corner yeah. of the, the cabinet yeah so, I was going to mention, uh, I didn't use any real products uh, like poisons other than boric acid, yeah. which I don't know if that's considered, it's considered a poison, but uh, I did use a little boric acid. But uh, I did one thing that I think really you haven't talked about, that uh, every night I'd wash and dry my kitchen sink. Okay. And I make sure I, I basically tried to uh, starve the roaches and Good. don't feed them anything. So I got rid of any food possibly they could eat, like uh, take the garbage out every night. I'd wash and dry the sink. And I think that did a lot to, uh, and also I got rid of, like you mentioned, I got rid of the uh, mats in front of my door. I pulled the uh, mulch back away from the house and all that. I think that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, but, if, you, uh, if you read any of our fact sheets, we always talk about the bug. But then before we ever talk about chemicals, we talk about all the non-chemical strategies you can do and sometimes only do and get successful control. And so yeah. you, changing your environment, the things you've done is is excellent. Well, I tried the whole food cleaning up thing with my teenagers, but it didn't work. They stayed. I don't know why. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, hygiene really, really is a, a you key, tell my teenagers to, to, keep an, uh, to keeping the roaches away. Teenagers yeah. don't care about hygiene, so <laughs> it's not an issue for them. No, but, but, you know, the dry counters and the yeah, dry sinks absolutely. and stuff, because we do always say, when we see a palmetto bug in the kitchen, we always say, oh, it just came in from outside. It just wants a drink of water, you know, <laughs> or it wants that watermelon juice that's still sitting on the counter where we cut the watermelon. So if you do, I mean, if you deprive them of, of food, just like if we deprive spiders of prey, you're not going to have it so helps. many spiders in the yep. house. Yeah. It, it helps. Right. Deprive them of water, too. That's yeah, yeah. water's key. I mean, I mean, it, all of us, 
water is precious. So food, we can go a pretty long time without food, even a bug. But water is, is key to everything that lives. All okay, right. I've got an ant story, too, but I'll save it for another day. Good. I appreciate <laughs> we, we need callers for the much. next show. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> okay. <laughs>